Hello, and welcome to a new unit in Algebra 1, and this is a section over polynomial expressions, okay? And we're just going to introduce you to them today. So we're going to identify what a polynomial is and equivalent forms of that polynomial, and then we're going to classify that polynomial by the degree and number of terms that it has, okay? So the first thing that we have um, is we have defining polynomials. Okay, and so we have this big blanket concept of what a polynomial is, okay, and we can classify them by the terms, okay, and a term is, um, that's what's separated, so separated by the plus and minus signs, okay, and then we can also classify polynomials by their degree, and the degree is the largest exponent, okay? And so if we take a look at what exactly a polynomial is, you know, we could take a look at a polynomial and non-polynomials, okay? Uh, a polynomial is an expression involving a sum of powers in one or more variables multiplied by coefficients where the powers must be whole. Okay, yuck. All right, basically, a polynomial is an expression, all right? So an expression, this is an expression. The difference is, is that there's no equal sign in expression. Expression means that you're just adding and subtracting things. So let me identify my terms here. This, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term, okay? And we have one or more variables, okay? Um, so we have both x and y in this polynomial here. Um, and we have to have our powers must be whole. Powers is the same thing as our exponents, okay? Exponents. Okay? And down here we have a polynomial consisting of two terms, okay? And the reason why this is a polynomial is because this is x to the first power. Now, when you see something like the square root of 5, you know, that's a number, okay? And this is we what we call a coefficient, okay? A coefficient is the number in front of the variable. In front of the variable, okay? And so, um, and if we have something out here where you just have a number... K is a constant. So a constant is a number without the variable. Okay? And so that's what we've got. All right, so that's what we're looking for. But we want to make sure that our exponent has a whole number. So either 1, you know, 2, 3, those are all whole numbers, so we can consider those polynomials. Now, a non-polynomial is, is when... You know, we have something uh, where we don't have a, um, a variable raised to a whole number, okay? If I have, like, the square root of x, you know, remember, if I take the square root of x, it's like taking x to the one-half. Because my variable here is a fraction, it's not a whole number, it's not a polynomial, okay? And so if any of your terms contain anything like that, then that's what you have. And even down here, okay, this is a fraction, Okay, where your variable is in your denominator. So um, this is not a polynomial because if I rewrite this as 10 to the x to the negative 2 power, because that's all it is. When I have x, oh, something over x squared, that's x raised to a negative power. And so because I have this negative power here, okay, it's not a polynomial. So that's, why, that's how we can kind of distinguish between which is a polynomial and which isn't. Okay, so uh, let's talk about classifying a polynomial. Okay, we can classify them by the number of terms. And so if I have a one-term polynomial, we call that a monomial. Okay, and so an example of that would just be like x squared or, you know, 3y cubed or say like, um, I don't know, r to the sixth power, okay, anything like that, and let's just put like a seven there just to be fun, okay, if I have two terms, I call that a binomial, okay, binomial, okay, mono means one, bi means two, okay, and so an example of that would be 
And let me do this in red binomial. Okay, an example of that would be like x plus 2. That's a binomial because I have two terms. Okay, a monomial just has one term. Okay, and you can multiply things within those terms, but a binomial just has two terms. All right, and you can get a little bit more crazy here, and you can do, say, like, you know, uh, 3x squared plus y. Okay, that has two terms. Okay, what's being separated by a plus or minus sign. Um, and let's just come up with another one. Let's say uh, 7x squared y minus 32x cubed y squared. Okay, so you can kind of just do whatever. Now, this whole thing here is a term. Okay, if you're multiplying things together, those are part of the same term. Okay, but I have two of them that are separated by a minus sign. Okay, that's how I can distinguish that. Okay, the third one is a trinomial. Okay, and we're really going to hit trinomials hard. This, uh, you know, the relationship between trinomials and binomials is strong. Okay, so what I would say here is like a typical trinomial would be like x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay, that would be a trinomial because it has three terms. All right, um, you know, another example would be, say, like, y cubed plus 3x plus 7y, okay? This is a trinomial because I have three different terms. Now, if I have something with more than four terms, or four or more terms, uh, we would call that a polynomial, okay? So a polynomial, all right? And that's just a many, uh, you have many terms, okay? So an example of that would be, like, 4x to the 4th plus 3x squared plus 7x plus, I don't know, 10, all right? And so you have four terms. You can have as many terms as you want, okay, but you have four terms. Four or more terms gives you a polynomial, all right? Now, on the next one, okay, we classify polynomials by the number of degrees, and, and, and the degree is the highest exponent or sum of exponents on any variable term. So, like, if I take a look at, say, something of the first degree polynomial, that would be, like, x plus 7, okay? And I know that that's a first degree polynomial because I have a 1 as my exponent. If you don't have any number here, your exponent is 1. Okay, another example of that would be, like, 3x plus 2y, would also be a first-degree polynomial because your exponent is 1. Okay, a second-degree polynomial would just be something like x squared plus 3x plus 2, okay? Because my largest exponent is 2, that's a second-degree polynomial. Okay, another one like that would be, say, like, you know, 4y squared plus 3x plus 1, Okay, and I'm just making these up, but, you know, the, my largest exponent is a 2, okay? If you talk about third degree, you know, pretty simple. Uh, you know, we're just talking about, um, you know, something with an exponent of 3. So if I would say, like, 7x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x plus 8, okay? I'm just making these up again. My largest exponent is 3, and that's why we call it a third degree polynomial. Okay, uh, if a, we had a fourth-degree polynomial, let's just call it like 14y to the fourth plus 3y cubed plus 7y plus, um, you know, 3y squared plus 1, okay? My largest exponent is 4, so we look for that. When we look for this, we go, okay, where's our largest exponent? We ask ourselves, what's the largest exponent? And we ask ourselves, how many terms are there? So, you know, that's a question we ask. So a question to ask yourself, all right, all right, it would be how many terms, okay, and what's the largest exponent? What's the largest exponent? Okay, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so let's just take a look at a couple of examples of different types of polynomials. 
Um, and what we can do, you know, we have a polynomial. These are all different polynomials, but we can categorize them as a type of polynomial based on the terms and based on the degree, the number of exponents, okay? So when I see something like this, um, this is my polynomial, 3.1x cubed minus 6.7x squared plus 1. Okay, I have one, two, three terms. One, two, three terms. Therefore, it's a trinomial, okay? And my largest exponent is 3, so it's a third degree, okay? Uh, the next one that we have um, has one, two terms. Therefore, it's a binomial, and my largest exponent is four, so it's a fourth degree polynomial, okay? Now, this last one's where it gets kind of tricky, all right? Uh, I only have one term here, all right? And you're probably going, well, hey, how do you know that there is just one term? I only have, um, you know, I, ha I, have a, I have negative 14, which is a number, multiplied by x, which is being multiplied by y, okay? So I have a number multiplied by two variables. I don't have that same thing being separated by any plus or minus signs. I know there's a minus sign here, but there's nothing on the other side of it, okay? So if you just have one thing, then you have a monomial, okay? And it's a second degree because, you know, your degree on x is a 1, and your degree on y is a 1. So if you're multiplying these two things together then you take your exponents, add them up, and that's going to give you a degree of 2, okay? And that's what we're looking for. All right, uh, the next thing we need to talk about is standard form of a polynomial. So a polynomial in standard form have the highest degree variable term followed by descending powers of variable terms, all right? So what I do here, notice your that your exponents go in descending order, okay? Notice that you start, your first term has a 3, your second term has a 2, and your third term has a 1, okay? So this is in standard form, okay? Um, and that's what I typically do. Uh, you know, if I write out a polynomial, I say like x, you know, like 3x cubed uh, minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 17, okay? Your exponents go 3, 2, 1, and then 0, okay? You're constant, all right? And that's what we're looking for. That means that it's in standard form, all right? So uh, let's say if you have multivariable terms, um, there can be a multiple standard forms for the polynomial, okay? You can do descending powers of x, where you've got, say, you know, you'd use the ones with the x. So x cubed, x squared, x, and then your constant. Or you can do it in descending powers of y, where you move these around and you get y cubed, y, and then y, and then 11. Okay? So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so um, if we were to write these variables in standard form, okay? So we have, let's just do with like one variable polynomials, okay? And I want to look for, this is a polynomial. I have one, two, three, four terms. So I'm going to write that out over here, that I have four terms. And this is degree five, okay? Because my largest exponent. So that's what goes out front, okay? I'm going to do 4x to the fifth, okay? And then my next largest exponent is a two. So then I do plus... 3 fourths x squared, okay? My next largest exponent is 1, so I'm going to put minus 3x, and then my constant goes last, so then I have the minus 7 here, okay? Same thing down here, okay? This has three terms, okay? Let's write that out, three terms, and this is a degree 2 polynomial. All right, so I'm going to write out the one with my largest degree, which is a squared. So I've got negative 4x squared. My next largest exponent is 1, so I've got plus 5x. And then I have my constant, which is negative 3.7, okay? Now, notice that when I write this, these are equivalent forms, okay? It's just that one of them is written stan in standard form. So you'll typically see them written like this, okay, and when they're presented to you. All right, let's talk about... Um, multivariable polynomials, 
And so what I want to do here is, is this. Um, let's take a look here. This one is going to go, and these are all kind of different, so you kind of have to reason your way through it. On this one, you know, this is a degree three, or I'm sorry, uh, that has three terms, okay? So I have one term, two terms, three terms. My degree here is four, okay? I need to take two plus two, which gives me four. So my degree is four. All right, so now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take my, I'm going to write this in ascending order. So I'm going to put my term with the largest degree out front, which is this term. So I'm going to make the, write this as negative 3, x squared, y squared, okay? And then my variables with degrees of 1, or I mean this whole thing is a degree of 2, but 1 plus 1 is 2. And so this is going to be plus 4xy and then plus 14, okay? So this one is in standard form. This one down here is a little bit tricky. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we can, I'm going to do this a couple different ways where it would be acceptable. Um, this, is, this one has three terms. Okay, and that's one, two, three terms. Okay, separated by the minus and plus signs. And then my degree here is four. Okay, my degree is four. All right, and I get that because I have an exponent of 1 and an exponent of 3, and so that's going to be, um, you know, the one that I'm going to put first. Okay, so let's do this um, in terms of y. So let's have it ascend, and de no, descend. Descend for y. Okay, so my first term, if I'm doing it in terms of y, would be x times y cubed, over 7 minus um, 2x squared y plus and then 3x square root of 3x cubed, okay? And so it's kind of already in the descend for terms of y, but let's do it for the descend in terms of x. So descend for x, all right? So I look at the term with the largest exponent above my x, which is this term right here. Okay, and that would go uh, the square root of 3 times x cubed um, plus, uh, not plus, let's do minus 2x squared y, okay, and then plus x times y cubed over 7. Okay, now I want to clear up a misconception about this real quick. You know, when you have this term here, x times y cubed over 7, so x times y cubed over 7. You may look at this and be like, wait a minute, this has a fraction in it. How is this a polynomial? Well, what we need to understand here is that I can rewrite this as 1 over 7 times x times y cubed over 1. And what I have here is that this is my, my coefficient is 1 seventh, okay? And so I could rewrite it like this as 1 seventh x times y cubed, and that's just going to be my term, okay? You can write this a number of ways, but you need to understand that it's, you know, we have a polynomial when my x and y's are in my numerator, when they're, when they're up top, and when my exponents are whole numbers, okay? All right, so let's uh, do some simplifying of polynomials by combining like terms and writing the polynomial in standard form. So let's talk about one variable polynomials in like terms. Now, what I'm looking for when I talk about like terms is terms with common variables and common exponents. Okay? So it's a little bit easier to do when you just have one variable uh, polynomials. Uh, and so what I'm going to look for here is I have, I want to I find my like terms. Okay, my like terms in this, in this are, are, is this first term, 4 fifths x squared. I'm only looking at the variable and the exponent. And I'm looking for other terms with the same variable with the same exponent. Now notice this is not a like term because it has an exponent of 1. But this one right here, 
okay, has a variable of x with an exponent of 2. All right, so I'm going to underline that. These I can combine, okay, and what I do is this. All right, I'm going to rewrite this as 4 fifths x squared minus 1 fifth x squared plus 2 thirds x. All right. Now, I can combine these two, and the way I think about it, and there's a couple different ways of doing it, um, the way I think about it is if I have, you know, a common variable with a common exponent, I add their coefficients, and the coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable. So I'm just going to take 4 fifths minus 1 fifth, which is going to give me 3 fifths, and then I just keep my variable and the same exponent, Okay. And then I just add 2 thirds x, and that's my answer. All I've done is combine those like terms. Okay, now another way to think about it, you know, when you take 4 fifths x squared minus 1 fifth x squared, you know, mathematically what I can do is I can factor out an x squared, okay, which is the opposite of the distributive property. So what if I did that, if I would take x squared, I could factor that out, and on the inside, I'm left with 4 fifths minus 1 fifth, okay? And then I can add these two numbers together. 4 fifths minus 1 fifth gives me 3 fifths, and then we can just multiply that by x squared, and that's what we got here. Okay, so however you want to think about it, you know, I always struggled with this, and I always just remembered, hey, the trick is... Add your coefficients or subtract them, do whatever, but then keep your variable with that same exponent, okay? All right, let's look at something that's a little bit harder, um, and let's combine like terms on this, all right? Um, you know, I'm going to look at this first term, x, y. Do I see any other terms with just a single x and a single y? And this one has y squared, so these aren't like terms. This one has an x squared, so that's not a like term. And this one has a y squared, so these aren't like terms. But this one has an x, y, all right? So x, y, and x, y, those are like terms that I'm going to combine. Okay, the other one that I can combine that I noticed is that I have this term here with an x and a y squared. Okay, I also notice that I have that same type of term over here, x and y squared. Okay, so now I'm going to put all these together, all right? I'm going to put x, y out front, okay, this first one, and then I have minus xy, all right? The next one I have is minus one-fourth xy squared, okay, um, and then plus two xy squared, um, and then the last one that I have is plus three-fourths x squared y. Now, there's no other term that's like that, so I'm just going to keep it the way it is. All right, now the cool thing about this one, the nice, uh, what I like about this problem is that I have an xy minus an xy. Now, something minus itself is going to give me what? The answer to that is zero, okay? So I'm going to put a zero here, all right? And you think about it like this, okay? These are two numbers that you're multiplying together. Okay, let's say that you had this, just for example, just, just look and you don't have to write. If I had 2 times 3 minus 2 times 3, what's that going to be? Well, that's just going to be 6 minus 6, which gives you 0, okay? And that's the idea. You know, the, guys, you're op the hard part about this is that you're operating with letters, okay? It's confusing. It's hard. But you have to bridge that gap, and you have to go, okay, what am I really doing here? Like, why is this 0, you know? And that's a question that you should answer, okay? And especially as I'm going through these videos, you know, if I don't explain what I'm doing then, you know, write those things down and say, hey, how come when you subtract those that you get zero, okay? And I can go through an example and show you why, okay? You know, this idea is the same thing as this. It's just that I'm using numbers here. We're here I'm just using letters that are in place of numbers, okay? All right, the next thing that I have um, is combining these two, all right? Now, remember, because I have the same variables, okay, I just need to add my numbers. So down here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do negative 1 fourth plus 2 over 1. Okay, let's get a common denominator here and add these together. So this is going to multiply top and bottom by 4 over 4. So I get negative 1 over 4 plus 8 over 4. Negative 1 plus 8 is going to give me 7 over 4. And so this is 7 fourths. So I'm going to do write this out as then plus 7 fourths x, y squared. Okay. 
keep it as a fraction. Fractions are your friend, all right? They're not like uh, certain people I work with that, uh, you know, ditch you on every chance they get. Um, yeah, I digress. Okay. Um, and then this last one, we're just going to we're just going to add it in because we didn't combine it with anything else. Okay. Now, do we need this zero out front? No, we don't. Okay. So I'm just going to write this, and we can write it a number of ways. Okay. I can write this as seven fourths x y squared plus three fourths x squared y. Okay. That's one way of doing it, seeing as though my y values go in descending order. Now, I could rewrite this another way and make it so that my x values go in descending order, and I could rewrite it as 3 fourths x squared y plus 7 fourths x y squared. Okay, and we're just combining those as like terms. All right? So I know this is kind of a long video. Uh, it's kind of tedious and all that. It's a lot of explanation. It's a lot of, you know, this, this stuff, guys, should be... Um, you know, when we're done with this, you know, should go pretty quick and you should be able to answer these questions, hopefully, okay? Make sure you use your notes, make sure that you're, um, you know, utilizing your resources and, uh, you know, actually writing things down and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see you later. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.